What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we got ourselves a sweet first gen that we're doing a shied 12 millimeter injection pump and attack on. So let's get her on the dyno and get ourselves some, uh, some initial numbers. All right, so we got the truck strapped down. Now we got to load up the dyno. So I've already got all our weights in here. So you see, 91 Dodge W350, 6,500 pounds, driven wheel weights around 2,000 pounds, undriven weight is everything else. So what the driven weight is, is how the dyno loads the load cell. So the driven weight will be your wheels, your tires, your brakes, your axles, your drive shafts, everything like that. So we got that in there. So now, hit save, hit exit. And we'll go up here to calibration, do our parasitic measurements. What parasitic measurements are is basically parasitic draw on your brakes hanging up, the, the loss within the transmission, everything like that. So you take it up to speed, put it in neutral, let it coast down. So let's get that done. Now we got our parasitic windows timed. So the parasitic loss is all set. So we can exit that. Go into our actual tests, performance, power curve. So for this one, since we don't have a tack, can't really calibrate off of engine RPM. So use mile per hour limits so we will start the test at 45 mile an hour stop at 70 so our vehicle weight is still 6500 pounds power at 50 mile an hour is 20.8 so yeah we are ready to ready to start our first test and every time i'm running the dyno this little guy who's eating a granola bar always comes out to hear it and to watch it so let's give him a good show So we got our initial results. So now let's take it back to the, uh, take it in the garage, 
and put our new pump and tack on. All right, so we got our dyno numbers and we got them in the shop here. There's what she looks like under the hood. So we got ourselves a pusher intake, pusher pipes, these uh, valve breathers, a BD turbo and manifold. I believe this is a, yeah, right there, Mishimoto rad. I believe a Mishimoto intercooler and some stuff from uh, far from stock on her. And also from that blue line there, got ourselves a fast fuel system. But numbers it made weren't that impressive because this guy right here, that stock fuel pump, doesn't really flow that great. So we got this for it. This is a Shide Diesel 12 millimeter VE pump. So you can see right there, the part number, everything for it. It is a Shide Lightning pump set for 4,000 RPM. And yeah, she is pretty much maxed out to what you're gonna get out of a V. Comes with a new lock nut and a nut. New gasket to mount it with. Lines are all covered, it's all painted up. We are also putting this uh, tack from Autometer on. There's a part number right there. So basically, this here. This is your pickup for the RPM sensor and it straps and it straps onto your alternator. I think I did a previous video of putting one of those on my pull truck. So I'm probably not gonna go super into depth into that. And pulling the, uh, pull the pump and everything's kind of straightforward, but uh, I'll show you, show you how to advance the timing on it just by twisting the pump. And yeah, everything you gotta do to get it off. But uh, first, we get the injection lines off, get this here, intake off, all the uh, shift bracket, throttle bracket, the electrical for it, the return springs, fuel lines, all that stuff. And also disconnect the battery and throw a charger on it because it would not uh, hold a charge from jumping it. So let's get started. All right guys, so we got our pump out. Now we got to swap some stuff over, so. Just this fitting for the fast that goes in here. You have to take this fitting out, put this one in. So, to take it out, took this boost line off. This is the fuel return line from the pump. I dropped the power steering down. You probably don't really need to do that, but just for the sake of videoing and stuff like that, just made it easier. Um, this bracket right here, there's two 10 millimeter bolts. There's also supposed to be a longer bolt going from that to a bracket on the back of the pump, but it wasn't in this truck. So, um, pulled out the one bolt, loosened the other one off because it's kind of hard to get it in and out down there, unless you pull the power steering pump and vacuum pump right out of the way. And then that just swivels back. There's three 13 millimeter bolts on the uh, pump that hold it there. Then you have to loosen or take the nut and the lock washer off, being careful not to drop it in the timing cover. Then this puller here, this one's from Power Driven Diesel, works real nice. Uh, the holes in it come slotted so you can do common rail VP trucks and also P-pump trucks, it does them all. It's basically these two bolts. Go into two threaded holes in the injection pump gear. And you can see there's a keyway there as well. Um, and then you tighten those two bolts up and then tighten the center bolt up. So you tighten these two bolts down into the gear and then tighten this nut up or this bolt up sorry and it'll press the gear off and you hear a pop so then so then the pump will just pop back off the timing cover so now we got to clean this gasket off here because the kit comes with a new one 
and also the pump comes pre-timed at top dead center so you have to get the engine to top dead center before you install the pump which on a 12 valve super easy that right there is called the timing pin so to get it out I push them in first take a small screwdriver and pop this lock ring out and then you pull it out it looks like this there's an o-ring on here pop that off and then it'll move freer in the hole for making adjustments so now it'll slide nice and easy in and out and on this one you can usually take um, a 22 or a 21 mil socket and ratchet on the alternator pulley and turn it over until there is a pin well not a pin but a hole in the back of the gear for that um, little uh, little tab on the end of the timing pin to push into and once that's pushed in then the engine is at top dead center so so I've already done that with this engine So now, I just have to clean the uh, mounting surface off for the pump, and throw the pump in. I think I'll leave the power steering out, um, till I get the pump and everything in, and then it'll be easier to get the timing pin to put the o-ring back on, and get that all set up properly. Because it's not that hard to put the, put the pump back on, there's only like three or four bolts. So, let's get the pump in then I will show you what you have to do from there. So we got our pump in and I installed the front gear nut loosely, snug enough that it'll hold the gear onto the shaft. Installed these nuts loosely and um, then backed this bolt out down here. This is the timing locking, the pump locking bolt. So the pump comes with this little pin right here. You back this nut off, slide this pin onto the collar that's behind the nut head, or behind the bolt head, and then tighten this back up. So now, the, once you do that, the pump shaft is free. So then, normally, there's a line on this tab of the pump and a line on the timing cover. When you line those two lines up, the pump is timed to the factory spec. But we wanted to advance the pump, so basically this pump, works like a distributor to advance the timing. You rotate the pump head toward the head of the truck. So you rotate from the back of the pump clockwise. So then the mark on the pump is about an eighth of an inch above the mark on the uh, timing cover. And then you can go ahead and tighten these bolts up, there, or these nuts, there's three of them. Torque the front pump nut to 60 pounds and yeah, it's not like a P-pump where you have to torque that to like 130 because it is a keyed shaft. It's not really going anywhere. The pump nut is just basically holding the gear on. Then after that, we can go ahead and start bolting up our brackets. So bring this one back up. Put that nut in down, put that bolt in down there. Start putting our lines on. We'll put this return line on first, then the line that's the boost reference and remove your timing pin remove the timing pin before you torque up the nut put the o-ring back on and then just slide this into the hole don't put it in all the way or else you will shear the tab off the end of it so put it until it bottoms out in the gear then pull it out a little bit probably like an eighth of an inch or something like that so now that that's all in, 
we'll get putting the rest of the stuff back on and yeah get her back on the dyno all right so we got our truck back on the dyno here all right so we got our truck back on the dyno here she's all strapped down and we're gonna make another hit so we got our same parameter 6500 pounds uh right there 6500 pounds everything's the same as it was the first time so let's get uh let's get a run on her and see see what increase we have